Hi folks, it's Sean McCormack. Welcome to the channel. So I'm just going to talk about something I've, I've done. It's not the first one I've done, but I, I was helping set someone up for it. So what I was doing is I was doing a remote shoot. Now the concept of a remote shoot is that I'm here in my room in front of this computer and that I am taking photographs of someone who is somewhere else. Now the prerogative is that this person has to have a camera and has to have a camera that is tetherable. So by tethering, it means that you have software that allows you to plug a cable into the computer and or into the camera, connect it to the computer, and then using TeamViewer, you can then control that person's camera remotely. So th the premise is pretty simple. You get TeamViewer and they get TeamViewer. And with that, you get an ID and a password. They give you the ID and the password and then you can remotely log into their computer. Now you can do this free, non-commercially, but there is commercially, you have to pay for a license. So then, then they get the software. Now in this case, I was shooting with a model, Suzanne. Suzanne has a 1300D Canon, so she's able to use EOS Utility. And um, so I gave her a hand getting the software and we installed it. And then basically we just get set up from there. Now. I've shown the video what the settings need to be, but basically you need to set up Dropbox. And so what you do is you set up the cameras that when it takes photographs, it's shooting RAW and JPEG. The JPEG goes to the computer, um, which goes into a Dropbox folder that has been shared with you, the photographer. And then the RAW and the JPEG stay on the, on the card and camera. And then the model sends you them later on via Dropbox or via WeTransfer, whichever one is more convenient. So that's basically what it is. So there's a small little bit of setup in it. And I show some of that very briefly in the video that I took when I was actually doing the shoot. And so I will come back after that and just discuss it a little bit more. Hey folks, I'm here with Suzanne anyway. So Suzanne is actually halfway across the country from me. And so obviously we're here. So what I've done is we've set up TeamViewer and we're running EOS Utility with the live view on. So when you open EOS Utility, you get this section here. And the main settings that you need to have going is you need to set up your destination folder here. And this is a Dropbox folder that you then share with whoever uh, you're shooting you basically. And then in here, you need to make sure you're set to uh, raw and a JPEG of some kind. In this case, it's large JPEG. And here with the settings, you click on this and it gives you the option to have when you've got raw and jpeg that you only transfer jpegs to the computer so the model will then send you the raw files afterwards so those are the main settings that you need to have going and from there you can change the settings in the camera uh, see what's going on and you move the focus point around here with this so that the focus going now the main thing that's happening and as suzanne will attest to is that she is the one moving the camera and doing all of the hard work while you are sitting down <laughs> basically pressing a button. So that is the bulk of what is going on with it. And um, so it's basically you just set up TeamViewer and EOS Utility and your and Dropbox and you are able to start remote shooting with any model that has a camera anywhere in the world. So it's pretty straightforward to install all of the things there. And um, so key things to remember is that you have to do that Dropbox share. That's really, really critical. And um, because what that allows you to do is as you're taking the shots, after a couple of seconds, the JPEG image will show up in the Dropbox and you're able to actually then go in and look at the image closer so that you know that you're getting what you want and can work towards it. So if there's, if there's issues with the camera with, with focus and stuff like that, you know straight away, you're not, you're not guessing. You can, of course, have this set up through Lightroom on, on the models machine if they have Lightroom. So that way it imports using um, watched folders to come in and you can zoom in and out on that. But the problem is that you're looking at a video preview, preview being sent across the net and that can be a bit slow. So I find it's better to have the actual JPEG file come across where I can look at it. Now, if I wanted, I could import it via like watch folders into my own Lightroom and do it that way. But mostly I'm just using preview just to have a look at it. Um, so that allows you to know that you're getting exactly what you want. Some things to know as well is that shooting remotely is far, far slower. You have to set up each shot, think about it, take the shot, now you can take a couple of shots and then preview them. You don't have to look at every shot afterwards. But initially when you start, it's a good idea to look at each one so you know that things are working. But then after that, you can come back and just shoot a couple at a time, go back and check them and then move on. 90% of the time when you're shooting this stuff, you're going to do one or two looks. You're going to be shooting against the wall or, or with a backdrop or whatever that the model has. And that's it. That's kind of what you're going to be limited to because you can't move the camera. You can't set up as much stuff. The, car the model will be doing all the camera moving and stuff like that. So there'll be lots of backwards and forwards that move it up, move it down, and just generally getting happy. The model gets to see all the shots as you're shooting as well because she can see the screen. And what I found really helped was during the session, we would bring up the Dropbox folder um, on, the com on her computer and we could actually look through some of the files so that she could see what was going on as well. So because we're in lockdown here, 
the only way I can potentially shoot with anybody um, is this way. Um, maybe I could shoot somebody within my 5k that live near me, but that's about it. And that would have to be outdoors. Um, so this allows me to shoot stuff indoors with people like all over the world, literally. Once they have the camera and most people these days have cameras. So that's very, very, very helpful. And especially models like to shoot other models. They're, they're models, they're friends with models. So it's, it's great from that point of view. It allows you an opportunity to shoot with somebody and potentially shoot with somebody that you would not have had an opportunity to shoot before because they're just they're in a different country and they don't travel and things like that. So it's, it's well worth looking out for. And I'm using this information to try and help models um, that I'd like to shoot with who have cameras that don't understand the process. It's not difficult. A lot of times that people have problems with something technical, it's that they're telling themselves that they're not able to do it. When in actual fact, when they go to do it, they're like, Oh, oh, that was easy. And that's the point. It is. It's easy. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. If you can install Dropbox, you can definitely install all of the bits that need this to happen. So if you're a model looking at this, great. Okay. And it, hopefully that will also give you a revenue stream that you can, you know, do in this lockdown times that you're able to charge for people for shoots. All right. So folks, hopefully you found that interesting. Do give it a like and subscribe to the channel and all that kind of stuff. Hit the notification bell. And thank you for taking time to watch this.